Hello and welcome to The Record Club, brought to you by Record Store Day, the official charts and National Album Day, and proudly in association with Bowles and Wilkins. My name is Jess Izat. Thank you so much for joining us. We are very excited to say that our guest this evening is John from Everything Everything to talk all about their new album, Raw Data Feel. If you are new to The Record Club, we're going to be spending the next half an hour talking to John from Everything Everything, all about the brilliant new record. And then we are going to be putting forward some of your questions forward for him to answer all about the album. So as if there is anything you would like to know about the new record, whether it's about a certain song, maybe the artwork, a particular lyric that you've enjoyed, drop us a question in the comments section below and we'll be getting to them in the second half of our chat. On top of that, one lucky person who sends in a question today will be randomly selected to win a pair of Bowers and Wilkins PX7 over-ear noise-cancelling headphones, which I'm modelling for you right now. And it's a very wicked prize. It, the album sounds amazing in it. So if you don't get your question to us, you're not in with a chance. So get them to us. I have the new record right here in my hand and if you haven't already got yourself a copy we uh, would like to say that you should definitely go pick up your own from your local record store uh, support your local and do that once our chat with john from everything everything is over so let's get straight into it shall we and say a big hello to john from everything everything how are we doing hello i'm very good how are you hello yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling good. The album's been sounding excellent and I feel like there's a lot to get into. But before I get stuck in with my questions, um, every week we start the record club off with a question from one of the many amazing independent record stores across the UK. And this week's question comes from Wax and Beans in Berry. Have you have you been there? No, but it sounds great. No, it does sound great. I'm hoping that they serve so, like baked beans or maybe yeah. yeah maybe it's coffee beans but I was thinking baked beans um maybe a bit both who knows we'll have to you know, let them get in touch um but John they're asking you uh raw data feel feels more accessible for people who aren't already fans of the band is this the start of a trend towards this new style of music um I wouldn't say so I think we've always uh tried to be quite accessible to be honest um but we just didn't have any god this is a terrible reply <laughs> we didn't we didn't want anything that was going to get in the way of having fun on this record to be honest um we didn't want any sad songs although we ended up putting a very sad song on uh, we didn't want anything slow we didn't want anything too complex but that's kind of where our heads are at that's what we're writing we didn't we didn't actually throw anything out um, in terms of a fully fledged song. This is all how we wanted it, really. And so I guess you could say that if we made another record right now, it would be similar in a similar mindset. So maybe mm. it's a trend, yeah. But I think yeah. I think our first record is more accessible than this one. <laughs> it's interesting because when I read that comment, I kind of thought um, I d I don't know about more accessible but I do kind of get that the energy is up so before you start getting stuck in with the lyrics and some of the some of the stuff that you've got in there you've got like a perhaps maybe it's a more overall accessible sound but I have seen it commented on some of the on some of the tunes on uh I think it's the first one actually um uh tel teletype yeah um people have mentioned they're like oh this is one that that new fans could get a hold of and get into. Good. I, I wrote that really quickly, um, <laughs> just in an afternoon. And yeah, it's not like a super complex tune. It's just a good one and it's kind of a true one. So I think it, it speaks to people. And, you know, if you need loads of stuff going on in order to enjoy it, then listen to another record by us. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? How quick is quick? you writing wise yeah well this one was crazy because I, I i just had the little chicka 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 sound that goes all through it and i picked up a bass because i thought it'll make me play something i probably wouldn't play on a guitar and it's just the same chords all the way through and i sort of ad-libbed the vocal over the top i didn't even plan what i was going to sing or how i was going to sing it and recorded it kind of live it was live i'm just trying to talk it down because it sounds stupid um <laughs> and then i listened back to it and i was like well 
I need to insert two words at the second verse because that's not even a real word that I've sung. But apart from that, that's kind of good to go. And then I sent it off to Alex and the boys and he put a load more stuff on it, guitars and things and mm. made it a lot more interesting. But really the core of it was just straight out of the blocks kind of thing. So we put it at the start of the record because it has that feeling. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, we need to shout out Wax and Beans. Thank you so much for your question. Um, my first question does actually come from Teletype. I feel like within the album, you have so many questions just in there generally. And you start the album with, um, so what do you want? So I'm going to ask you, what exactly do you want? Um, to know that uh, you've made a connection, I think, is is the biggest thing you can ask for with art. And we we, I mean, we, I'm not crying out for it because I feel like we've had we've had it a lot. And the week the record came out, we pressed the flesh all over the country with thousands of people, literally. And some of the things they said uh, and the way they reacted to us was just amazing yeah. what the music can do in terms of communication you know thousands of people i've never met in my life but they all felt like we'd made a connection to you know us in the band and them which is pretty much the max that's i mean it can't really get better than that in terms of making something and before we went live we were chatting very briefly about you guys on that smaller tour but by small you kind of went everywhere within the space of a very short time how was it meeting all these people like kind of connecting physically oh just crazy it was um such a diverse group of people for a start as old people very young people just uh everyone and a really good vibe there's like a a particular vibe when everyone's sort of there in agreement about the same thing i mean maybe they were all arguing about <laughs> what's the best song or whatever behind my back but it just seemed like a really nice vibe and they were all so pleased to be there and and queue up and just to say hello and have a sign something it was an amazing feeling is there a surprising fan favorite uh speaking of them arguing over their fave um has there been one since the release of the album that you think oh that's the one that they're really liking um i don't think so be just because well, firstly, we were very, very confident about this record. So we kind of, we thought all the songs could potentially be favorites. There wasn't one where it's like, oh, they're not gonna like that. Um, which is just not to be big headed, but we just were very <laughs> confident about it. We thought this is great, this is great, this is great, this is great. Um, or at least I did. So I think that's been cool. What's re been really great is usually you put the singles out and people are like, oh, those are the best ones. The album tracks are gonna be a bit albumy. With this one, it's like, there's probably five more singles on the record that we didn't put out and just watching people discover those has been great because they're just like what the hell's going on with this album <laughs> the first literally the first five tracks are singles and then there's like another maybe five or six which are just similar like energy level and uh people have just been reacting really well to that so yeah okay six albums deep uh very successful albums you've got and then now you've got this I guess I kind of want to ask you, um, what's your favourite part about curating a record then? Because it feels like you've literally just told us it's all killer, no filler. Mm -hmm. Like how and why and what's the best part? Tell us everything. Uh, I Well, with this record, when it came to track listing it, um, we, I wanted all, of, all the tracks on. I think we all, we all did in different ways. And so I think the idea was to make it two sides of banger, 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 have a rest, and then another <laughs> side of banger, 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 have a rest. So if you if you split it up seven by seven, it sort of does do that. Um, but it was a weird one to sequence because we never would usually put that number of tracks on a record, but we just felt really good, and we didn't feel like anything was didn't fit, and it we didn't fancy putting out a song we didn't think was that good at a later date, which tends to happen, even if people disagree about whether they're good or not. <laughs> um, sometimes we leave a track off and then we assume it'll get used somewhere, but then the label or whatever will say, hey guys, why don't we do an EP with that song that you didn't actually think was very good? Um, and it gets a weird spotlight on it. I mean, I, 
people <laughs> assume that refers to Supernormal and Breadwinner and stuff. I think both of those are great for the record uh, and the Mariana as well. But yeah, so this was actually very, very easy because it was just so maximal. It was just like, fuck it, let's put it all on. Um, if it's long, it's long. This is what we do now. <laughs> uh, I have a question about um, Pizza Boy. Uh, what would you pick, Pepsi or um, Coke? <laughs> well, it has to be both. That's kind of the point. That's kind of the I point. just think there's an obvious answer to this. And I think that you're just being wow. diplomatic. I am brew. Okay, fair enough. I'll give you that. Um, and also your favourite pizza. What are you picking? Honestly, I took the piss out of my good friend Michael in the band um, because he would choose a margarita everywhere we went around the world. <laughs> I thought it was the lamest, like least adventurous thing you could do. But I have come around to his way of thinking in recent years. And a good margarita is kind of better than any topping you can think of. A banging margarita is like the epitome of what pizza should be. That's what I think. Yeah. If you go to a place that's not a good pizza place, then I guess yeah. it is a bit of a cop out. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. But it has to have the basil on the top as well. Ch a glass A cherry. <laughs> a glass A cherry on your pizza. Okay, we're moving on from here before we fall out. Um, right. Okay. So where did this album begin for you? And um, when did when did you know it was finished? It began, um, I guess, shortly after Reanimator came out. It was a pandemic. We knew we couldn't really promote the record that we'd just done. So we felt, and it was, I was doing all the videos for it. And as soon as the last one of those was finished, it was like, I guess we just make another album now. Um, I can't remember what the first song was that we wrote. But certainly it was finished like on the last day it could have been so we did it right up to the deadline we did the whole thing in three months so writing the very first note to mastering all in three months and recording um, that, that seems very quick for a, a big record like this yeah that's that's one of the reasons <laughs> why it sounds like it does i think because there was no overthinking going on we had to do it quickly because vinyl takes a hell of a long time to make now um, partly because of Brexit and because of the pandemic. And for some reason, I can't get a straight answer on this. We don't seem to make it in this country. So everything has to be shipped abroad, done abroad. And it takes ages because it's a huge backlog. So boring reason, we had to <laughs> make it in this tiny little thing, even though it was going to be released right over there. So we were sat on it, not being able to tell anyone that we'd done this thing. And... Uh, yeah, we took it right up to the wire. Alex produced it, Alex and the band, and he was still working on songs right up till the last day um, before mastering, I would say, in his bedroom. Um, and then he would just send us what he'd done and we'd be like, OK, I guess that's going on the album then, which was kind of <laughs> exhilarating. I've got your uh, clear vinyl here, actually. Oh, lovely. I think it looks stunning. And uh, I know you've probably been asked a million questions about the AI lyrics within the album mm -hmm. um but i'm going to take a wild guess and say that the imagery that you have on here is all ai created as well right it is yeah who designed that and was that just to do was that all your guys was that all in-house was was that I, everything to weave did, it all together all the images i did i generated with ai um and then we had a designer called johnny costello who did the you know, the, the sort of border and all the text and all the cool stuff. He was the same guy we used for Get to Heaven, actually. So we get we went back to him. Um, but the, in terms of generating the AI images, that was just me typing. I had to learn <laughs> how this thing worked for a start. But then it was a question of typing in what I wanted to see and changing all these parameters and then letting it go. And it would just generate image after image after image. And why did you choose, um, lyrically, why did you choose to start putting AI lyrics in there? And also, how do you do that? Because you must have had the framework for the for the songs already. And then did you put parts in or what was the situation? It was, well, yeah, I guess I, well, when it came to writing the lyrics, it was, I had this huge block of 
uh, outputs that I got from this guy. I sent him everything I wanted to get put into the AI, and then he sent me everything that came back out. And so when I was writing lyrics, sometimes I'd be in the middle of a song, and then I would just open my file of AI stuff and just start scanning it until something jumped out of me. Or I had previously found a whole phrase or a whole sentence that I really liked, and I'd put that in my, like, A-list lyric bit. What made you think to do this, in, do that in the first place? It was, it was curiosity, firstly, because I knew that it was maybe possible for it to be done, and that just sort of fascinated me. Um, but also, I kind of wanted a uh, sort of a protective layer somehow with this record. I didn't want to just keep dragging myself through it because that can sort of wear you down a bit. So I wanted something that was taking the pressure off me a little bit. And it was this, I thought it could be done with AI. I did it with lot in lots of ways by making characters or by singing about things from other points of view, which I obviously have done before, but this was like another whole level of it. And the AI just felt like, um, it felt like keeping it at arm's length somehow that I, I couldn't be, I couldn't ever be, uh, caught giving myself away like emotionally because no one knows if I even really wrote that lyric so no one's going to say hey John what happened to you or like John are you okay about this thing that you might be singing about I'll be like don't know because I don't really that was the computer (laughs) yeah exactly and but I haven't told anyone what the computer said and what I said so that sort of makes me feel safe can you tell us if there's elements in every single song of AI, or is it just a few? Uh, there are definitely some songs that don't have any in. Okay. Okay, I feel like there are some slightly more, I want to say coherent, <laughs> yeah. um, or understandable, hu- like human lyrics that there perhaps are. probably wouldn't be AI. It kind of reminds me of, you know, when you get your phone and you like press the middle button and yeah. it makes sentences that sort of make sense, but then kind of not. So I guess it's a similar thing. It's very similar. Yeah. I'm not an expert, but it's it's choosing those words for you based maybe on what you've typed before or what a lot of people have typed before. And what I've done is, isn't that far apart, really. <laughs> I want to put those particular influences together before unless they were absolutely insane okay um right i can see some questions are coming in remember at home if you've just joined us you can get your questions to us and i'll be getting to them very soon um so i love uh metro land is burning and there's a couple of others i've already mentioned um pizza boy and uh actually yeah uh teletype at the beginning i love and also the closer you know it's one of those where you just go around and you're like, I love all of them. Um, I want to know who Kevin is. Everyone does. Everyone <laughs> does. What can you tell us? Um, well, I wanted to use characters. I have done it before, but this felt like a good opportunity, partly because I was pushed for time. I just thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use characters rather than try and find some abstract way to tell my stories. Um, so I chose an abstract way to tell them. And uh, I guess you could say he's like an amalgamation of um, people, really. Obviously, me is one of them, but he's not a specific one person. He's he's maybe three, I would say. Is Jennifer the same? Yeah, she's the same. She's a few people, let's say. Okay. Do any of these people know it's them? No. Well, okay. I do. The um, the other thing is we called the AI that we used, we called that Kevin as well, which just really confused everybody. Um, so some people like to think that when I'm talking about Kevin, I'm actually talking to the AI, which is kind of like another, a sort of very sci-fi approach to the record, which I'm not going to stop because it's very proggy. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've seen it described as the nerdiest album yet. And, I, and the more I look into it, the more I'm just like, yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Um, also, which song for you was uh, the most fun or enjoyable or, or satisfying to make or record? Um, I think Jennifer was actually good, very satisfying because it was a very last minute chorus that I wrote. Alex had written the rest of the song, basically, and I'd written the melody over the top. And we thought it was good enough 
Um, but then the very last minute, it was decided that it should it needed more. And um, I just went upstairs and wrote the chorus very, you know, again, very quickly. I think I, I think I brought it back and he sent me back up a few more times, but still. And I just thought, fuck it, I'm just going to do this kind of fleet, uh, fleet with Max sort of everyone singing together kind of. I actually was really influenced by uh, Don't Fear the Reaper, the way that chorus kind of rolls on. Come on, baby, don't do 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 yeah. uh, The way everything kind of falls over it like that. It's like an impossible, you can't sing it. One person can't sing it, which is what I just tried to do. And it's the same with Jennifer. <laughs> so you've got this kind of rolling feeling that it could actually just last forever, um, which is instantly sort of wistful and nostalgic. And then recording that with the guys, we all did all the vocals together, which was really nice. Um, and then Alex topped it off with that um, slide guitar, which again makes it really nostalgic and emotive. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Alex has smashed it with the uh, with the production. I feel like oh, it's yeah. just like yeah. all so on point. Uh, and well. when you said nostalgic as well with the um, Jennifer, the video as well, like nailed it yeah. with yeah. that too. I was like, I'm so emotional. Um, yeah. Right, okay, fan questions. We have uh, John Betts from Everything Everything's page who says, you guys have built up a very cool body of work over six albums. What would you be more inclined to get behind next? A singles album, a remix album, or B-sides album? And then he says he'd buy all three. <laughs> um, well, a singles album, I don't know. I think that's just... it. it the music industry is strange now. All our songs are already th out there. So you could make a singles collection by making a playlist on Spotify. So that wouldn't be much fun. Remixes, quite often things get lost in translation. So unless we were doing them all, which we're not going to do, <laughs> I'd say probably B-sides because that's going to please enough, you know, the highest number of people. That's cool. So I know they're already all, all out there being shared because I use Reddit too, folks. <laughs> Uh, I think a remix album could be fun though if you were in, doing it, maybe a doing bit it. more control of it. I understand what you mean though. It was all uh, yes. We have Lola Sutherland on the Record Club's page who says, "Do you remember the first song you ever wrote?" I do, and it was uh, unrepeatable, unfortunately, in uh, <laughs> public now. But I can remember exactly how it goes and exactly how to play it, and. Uh, I'm never going to because I'll get cancelled, unfortunately. <laughs> what what were the themes? <laughs> Twelve. It was just like it was just me trying to be, I guess I was trying to be rude. And uh it's very silly. And now the young John. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm what so intrigued. Uh, yeah. Uh, Angie Vandal on e on Everything's Everything's page uh says, Hello John, what's your favorite lyric on the album and why? Um, I really like the opening to Shark Week. Is it Shark Week Sugar or does somebody scream? I just think it's got a lot of stuff I enjoy in lyrics. It's got alliteration and humour with a really dark um, suggestion underneath. A lot of mystery. Opening lines are so important and I think that's a good one. Uh, we also have Cameron Shadden on Everything Everything's page saying, will you do another VR show? Uh, we actually did one the other day, which was on Minecraft, but there was a lot of things going on that week, so we didn't really talk about it very much. Um, probably is the answer, because I think you will see more of them, even though ours was a bit shit. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that we were there at the very start of it. Supposedly, we were one of the first people to do that, although I can't quite believe that, but apparently we were. Um, and yeah, it did suck a bit, but I think- Why did it suck? I don't understand. Uh, if you didn't have good internet, then you just couldn't hear the band and you, everyone, you could hear everyone walking around kind of going, bloody hell, this this is crap. And like- You can hear them as well. You could hear everyone from around the world in their living rooms, just kind of <laughs> muttering and going, well, I, I can't see a thing, you know? <laughs> I don't know why the Aussies in my example, but that's what my experience was. And then Aggie the Australians not having good enough internet. Yeah, it it was 
it was flawed, but it, we were right. You know, we were pushing the pushing the technology, man. Yeah. Well, the only way is up. It that's would. all I can say. Um, right. Who else do we have? Yeah. Hopefully the next one will be again, but better. Yeah. Um, Laura also on everything, everything's page says, would you or the band ever do a film score or soundtrack? Yeah, we'd love to. And we just want somebody to offer it to us, to be honest. We actually did. We actually are in talks with someone, I think, but I don't know how realistic that is. Um, so yeah, we absolutely would. We would jump at the chance. Amazing. Um, right. Okay. I have uh, a question which we bring the record club to a close with uh, that we like to ask for album recommendations, uh, something that you've been listening to recently or want to shout out, or maybe there is an artist that is dominating your playlist right now that you want to big up. Um, I really like a band called Mama from New York. They're sort of grungy. Um, I think their record is not out yet, the newest one. But there's plenty to listen to. Uh, they're really good. Is that someone that you'd like to collaborate with? or? Uh, I think they would tell me to go away. <laughs> <laughs> because what, would, what would a dream everything, everything collaboration be, actually? I think it would have to be somebody from a completely different walk of music because anything else would just be, would just be weird. It'd be like, why is there another guitarist here kind of thing? So I, I guess maybe a rapper. You know, oh yeah. And then we Maybe just like amazing. Kevin Kevin Abstract or or a female rapper, that'd be sick. Go or Kevin. Grimes. I thought about Grimes. I know she's not a rapper, but Yeah. I mean I'm talking about Kanye. I'm talking about Kanye. Okay, okay fine. <laughs> Kanye, I know you like to listen to the record club. Yeah. yeah. Get involved. Hit hit John up. He's ready after this. Um I actually do have one last question. I know that you finished the album. Um the last line is, are you a gambling man? So my final question to you, are you a gambling man in life? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank you so much. That is all we have time for for today. We have absolutely loved having you, John, from Everything right. Everything join us. Yeah. Of course, people at home, make sure that you grab yourselves a copy of Raw Data Feel um, from your local record shop as well. Support your local. I'm also excited to announce that the winner of this week's Bowers and Wilkins Wireless Headphone Prize is, drum roll, we have Angie Bandel on Everything Everything's page. So uh, please slide into the Record Club's DMs. We'll get those headphones to you. Thank you, everyone, for joining in and sending in your questions. Our next guest is going to be announced on the Record Club's social media very, very soon. So make sure you're following us. And all previous episodes are available to watch back on our YouTube channel. We'll see you soon. And, John, once again, from Everything Everything, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers.